Hello, welcome to our YouTube channel. Thank you for those who put up subscribes and thank you for your encouragement. As you share our videos and you like our videos, it keeps us moving and we'll do more. So please share more and that will give us a booster dose to continue doing more videos. Now, going back to today's lesson, sometimes farmers buy different type of birds. They may rear abu eka, sometimes they go for cob, sometimes they go for ross. Now, sometimes when you go for these, you find out that their, their good rate differs. When you buy cob, ross 308, the stocking density is around that 16 birds per meter square. You buy cob 500, the stocking density is around 17 birds per meter square. So, and you want to keep them in the same pen. So, which will result to some bad effects for you as a farmer. Sometimes you, you sometimes blame your village people that ah, these birds are bio, they are doing well initially, but when they start growing, they start dying. Respiratory disease, you give them a lot of drugs, there is no cure. So this might be as a result of your stock intensity. Sometimes we tend to, you know, tend to blame our village people for high mortality in our farm, for skin diseases in our farm, for respiratory disease in our farm, but one of the cause of all these things is the stocking density. Now, what is stocking density? Stocking density is the number of birds that can be kept by a particular area. Let me simplify. So you have a cage. How many birds can this take comfortably and perform well in this cage? But the best way to do this is before you even build the cage. But let's say you have already built your cage and you want to know how many birds can be inside this my cage. That is what we call the stocking density. So there is a way for you to calculate the stocking density. So as I've said previously, that let's say for cob, we say 17 birds per meter square. For ross, we say 16 birds per meter square. But this is not the uh, only yardstick. There are some factors that determine the stocking density. Factors like the type of housing, factors like the weight you want to achieve at the end of your cycle, factors like the climatic environment. You know, some areas are more colder than the other, some places are very hot. You know, the season in which you are wearing the best also affects your stocking density if you want your circle to what to give you the best result so you should take in mind one the season the environmental condition at which you want to rear your best two the type of housing or type of system which you are rearing your best and three the target which which you want to get at the end of the circle Yes, for the breed. So this will determine the stocking density of your pen. Have you ever wondered that you buy some number of birds, they perform very well. You buy another one, they don't perform very well. Sometimes you buy birds and you find out that when they are about maturing, they develop a lot of respiratory disease. Some of them, you know, they grow well from week one to week four. Then from week five, week six, week seven, they start, you know, with their retarding in growth. You experience high mortality in in mature birds. All this might be as a result of your stocking density. Sometimes you find out that when you slaughter your birds, you find there are some uh, dermatitis, there are some wounds around the skin of your birds. You find out that those birds have food, food dermatitis. You find out that there are some lumps of, you know, you know the skin disease the part of the, the, the birds. So these might be as a result of stocking density. As in my previous lesson, lesson we discussed about the various breeds of broilers that are in the market. And you, I, made, I make you to understand that these broilers in the market have different breeds. They achieve different weight at different times. 
So some of them are good in the six weeks game. Some of them you can keep them for six, seven, eight, nine weeks. Some of them I think up to twelve weeks. So the weight that each of them achieve per time differs. So therefore, thereby the stocking density for keeping these pairs also differs. So let's say if in your first season you buy cob, for instance, you keep it in a pen and they perform better. Then in your next one, you went and buy Abu Eka or you buy Abuba and put it in the same pen for a longer period of time. You might experience some changes because the stocking density for cob is then from the stocking density for rust. So we are going to look at the factors or the effects of overstocking. When you do not get your stocking right, there are things that will result as a result of overstocking. And one thing I want you to notice that the lesser the, the stocking density, the better for you. Because the best will have more space to go about and there will be less disease outbreak. So one of the effects of high stocking density is stunted growth. Yes, stunted growth. Now, when you overstock your pen with birds, a birds of, uh, let's say, 100 capacity, but you now stock it with 150 birds. Yes, initially, these birds will be growing very well. They will be doing very well. But as their weight increases, the stocking area reduces. Then, thereby, there will be competition in feeding. When there is competition in feeding, some will eat, some will not eat. Then you find out that some are growing, some are not growing. So there is no uniformity again. With time, there will be what? There will be stunted growth. Then you start going to the to the, the supplier, telling him, this, this place you supply me are not good. They are growing initially, but now they are not growing. Not knowing that the fault is from your stocking density. So, stunted growth may be as a result of one, not inability to eat very well. So there will be reduction in feeding if they are overstock. Two, the stunted growth will be as a result of what increase in the ammonia secretion in the pen. We find that because they are overstock, there will be a lot of feces being secreted. Then that place will be full of ammonia. So the ammonia and the heat secreted bring about what immunological response by the best in order to prevent them from falling sick thereby the energy that is supposed to use in growth you will now use it in fighting disease so you find out that the best will not grow fine so stunted growth is as a result of not feeding fine and two as a result of what of the energy that they get from this feed they are using it to do other things instead of growth another thing that leads to stunted growth in overstocking is the birds are unable to digest the feed well. Why? This is as a result of reduction in enzymatic activity. Now, these toxins being secreted from the environment reduce the secretion of enzymes, nutritive enzymes. So, at the end of the day, these birds do not digest the feed very well. So, the nutritive content that they get from that feed is reduced. So you still get stunted growth. So another effect of overstocking is the carcass quality of the birds. Now, because they are overstock, these birds tend to peck each other. As they peck each other, you find out that when you slaughter the birds, you find out that there are some, you know, some wounds around the body of the birds as a result of overstocking. So if you are the person that normally take your birds for all these people that come to um, to off takers, they will reject some of your best because of those wounds in the carcass. Another thing you find out that there is a food part dermatitis because the, the, the best that are overstock tend to drink a lot of water, so thereby there will be a lot of watery feces in the environment. And thereby, as they march on these watery feces, they get food part dermatitis, thereby reducing the quality of your best. Then, because they are overstocked, they don't move about. You find out that the hollow bones do not grow very well, so the birds will not even grow more taller, they will be stunted as a result of overstocking. So, overstocking causes a lot of damage to you as a farmer and make your profit to reduce. The birds are eating, but they are not growing. 
so that's why you need to what to have know how to calculate the stocking density of your pen another thing that overstocking can lead to is it predispose your best to a lot of respiratory diseases yes because they have to do the ink overstocking that lead to a lot of feces that lead to a lot of watery feces because the best tend to take more water when they're overcrowded now this will predispose them to respiratory diseases they inhale a lot of ammonia a lot of toxins now they think about respiratory diseases as well as respiratory diseases this best will now come down with disease and it has been found out that um best that overstock tend to get tend to um, get newcastle disease more than best that are not overstocked so the stocking density of your product of your pen is very very vital to you for success in any cycle of brella another thing that overstocking cause is the effect on the litter when your bears are overstock the litter tend to get spoiled quickly and we need to be changing the litter always which will lead to increase in, in the brother management activity lead to increase in your cost of buying more liters to change in the circle and which we then show forth in the activities of your staffs so they'll be more tired because they need to change the litter frequently and when they need to change the litter frequently find out that they will be overworked and if they are overworked they tend to complain more so the litter quality also and it has also been found that best that overstock there is high mortality in soft stock we found out that people that overstock their pain always complain of high mortality and from what all those points I've mentioned previously find that it leads to high mortality respiratory disease uh, in pecking um, ammonia secretion in the environment lead to you know, decrease in the immune suppression there's immune suppression so the best can even fight more disease and they tend to fall down with disease and of the high mortality in overstock them but I don't know all this the question is how do I calculate my stock taking this all you need is a measuring tape a paper and a pen and go into that pen if you have already built your pen use the measuring pen you know the length and breadth of your pen and using that to be able to calculate the area of the pen some of the measuring tape come in meter while some come in feet so if it is in feet you know that for brailler it is 1.5 feet per bed 1.5 feet per bed for layers it is 1.7 feet per bed so if you know the feet of the the area of the of the pen you'll be able to calculate how many beds can stay in that bed now let's go to um to a pen and also a cage and calculate how many beds can fit in into these pen so if you want to know the stocking density of a pen, let's say you have already built your pen and you want to know the actual beds that can enter this pen, all you need to is to measure the breadth and the length so you know the area of your pen. So what do you get? It in feet. Measure it in feet. In feet. Measure it very well. Eleven point nine feet, approximately twelve feet. Uh -huh. That's the breadth. Then let's take the length. The length of the pen is what?
approximately 24 feet so in this pen we have the breadth is 12 feet the length is 24 feet so we we'll see how many bears can this pen take in some instances some of the farmers go to the market and just buy a cage so for you to know how many bears can fit in into this cage you also measure the length in feet and also the breadth so you know how many bears what do you get five feet. five feet then that's the length now what's the breadth get the breadth That's 2.5 feet. So, how do we calculate the stocking density? So, we got 24 feet in the length, and we got 12 feet in the breadth. By the time you multiply 24 by 12, it will give us. 288 feet square remember we say 1.5 feet square per bird so by the time you divide 288 by 1.5 you're getting 100 and so you see this pen will contain 108 feet for the cage we get First, we have 5 as the length and 2.5 as the breadth. By the time you multiply and you divide by 1.5, you find out that, what, that this cage can contain 8 birds. So, you see, it's as simple as ABC. If you know the stocking density per bird. But one thing I want you to understand is that, like in some instances, we make reference of the weight you want to get. So I will just show you the various stocking density and the width that if you want to achieve this certain, let's say 1.4 or 2 kg or 3 point something kg, the various um, the various stocking density that you need to use. This is Now, we found out that in the pen, the pen can contain 192 bears, while in the cage, it can contain 8 bears. So you see, if you stock above this quantity, we call it overstocking. And the various um, effects or various adverse repercussions of overstocking that we have listed before you begin to experience it and your business is not good and at the end of the day you want to close up your farm but if you stick to the standard i'm sure you are going to enjoy your farm and by so doing you become among one of those people that are successful in poultry business so don't forget to like our our channel share it to other farmers and i will see you